Hi. Now, what we've got here is a particle P of mass 0 0.25 kilograms. And it moves upwards with a constant speed of U meters per second along a line of greatest slope on a smooth incline at 30 degrees to the horizontal. The pulling force on P has a magnitude of T newtons and acts at an angle of 20 degrees to the line of greatest slope. And what we've got to do is to calculate in the first part the value of T and in the second part the magnitude of the contact force exerted on P by the plane. So as usual if you'd like to have a go at this question and you haven't done so already just give you a moment to pause the video and when you're done do come back and you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So let's just see how you got on. Well, the first thing I'd want to do is put on some forces acting on the particle P. We've got the weight of the particle which is going to act downwards. We're told that its mass is 0 0.25 kilograms, so the weight is going to be 0 0.25 G Newtons. This is going to be a contact force because the particle is on a plane here. So when it's on a surface, then there's going to be a normal reaction, which I'll mark in there as R Newtons. All right. What we've got is the tension T Newtons, which is already marked in, but since I'm doing all the forces in red, I'll just mark that one in as red. Now it's on a smooth plane, so there's not going to be any friction. But we're told that it's moving up the plane with a speed of U meters per second, but at a constant speed. So as far as acceleration goes, because it's not gaining any speed or losing any speed, that acceleration A will be equal to zero meters per second per second. So I'll just mark that in there. The other thing I would want to do is that when I'm dealing with questions on planes, always a good idea I feel to draw a dotted line in there and the angle that the weight makes with this dotted line is exactly the same as the angle of inclination of the plane to the horizontal. So in this example, this angle in here is going to be 30 degrees. We're going to be using this angle very shortly. So how do we get T then, the value of T? Well, what I'd want to do is to think about resolving forces. Applying Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, basically, up the plane, taking up the plane as positive. So when we look at the resultant force acting up the plane, Remember, perpendicular forces have no effect, and so this reaction here, off the plane here, R Newtons, is not going to enter this equation. But, as for the tension T, this is inclined at 20 degrees to the direction I'm resolving. It's not perpendicular, but it is at an angle, so I need to split this into two components. And so we'll mark in those components. One will be up the plane, okay, and one will be perpendicular to the plane, say something like that, okay. I'll just put it slightly to the side there so hopefully you can see it. Now remember that when you have an angle between your force and the direction you're resolving in, we use the cosine of that angle. So what we've got here, this force up the plane is going to be T cosine of 20 degrees. So we'll just mark that in as T cosine 20 degrees. That's the effective force coming from the tension pushing the particle, or pulling it if you like, up the plane. This component of T has no effect. Now when we move on to the weight here, the weight is not perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in, but it is inclined at an angle, so what we need to do is split this into two components. 
So again, if I split this into two components, we'll do it in another color. Let's say we'll do it in this color. We've got one component in that direction, and the other component will be down the plane. Now we're not interested in this one because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. We're interested in the one down the plane. And the one down the plane, because it doesn't contain this angle of 30 degrees, remember this component will be 0.25g cos 30, but the one down the plane, because it doesn't contain this angle, is 0.25g sine of 30 degrees. And it's this one that acts in the negative sense to the direction we're resolving in. So it's going to be minus the weight, 0.25g, but sine of the angle of 30 degrees. So this is the resultant force now acting on the particle. Let's just take away those components because normally I wouldn't draw them on. I would get this just by looking at this diagram that we've got here. All right? So this is resultant force and it equals the mass times the acceleration. Well, the mass is 0 0.25 kilograms, but it is going up at a steady speed, at a constant speed. So the acceleration is zero. So whatever the mass is, if I multiply it by the acceleration, it's going to be equal to zero. All right? So it's just a question of rearranging this equation now to get t. So t is going to equal, well, if I just add 0.25g, okay, sine of 30 degrees to both sides, and divide both sides by cosine of 20, I'll get what t is. So if your calculator is in degrees mode, and you work that out, you should find you get 1.3036 and so on. And if we round this to three significant figures, then that tension is going to be 1.30 newtons to three significant figures, 3SF for short. All right. Okay, well, let's just now move on to the second part. And in the second part, we've got to find the magnitude of the contact force exerted on P by the plane. In other words, find out what R is. And to do this, we resolve perpendicular to the plane. And normally that happens in most questions. When you find yourself resolving in one direction, generally you, you have to resolve in a perpendicular direction for the next part. Okay, so we're going to resolve then perpendicular to plane. I'm going to take away from the plane as positive. All right? You could go into the plane if you like as positive to experiment with this. It doesn't matter. Uh, you should end up with exactly the same result. So, resolving away from the plane, taking that as positive, I've got all of R acting away from the plane. So we can just say that's going to be R. And as for the tension T, we've got to go back to our components again. Let's just bring them back in. And the same for the weight as well. Okay, Both these forces act at angles to the direction we're resolving in. So let's put those components back in again. So we've got our R, but you can see we've got part of the component of the tension acting in this direction. And remember, this one which contained the angle was T cos 20. So this one that doesn't contain the angle of 20 degrees becomes T sine 20. So we've got R plus T sine 20 degrees. OK, so that's that one. As for the weight, we split that into two components, one down the plane and one into the plane. The one down the plane is now perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in, so we're not interested in that. We're only interested in this one. And this one contains the angle between the weight and the direction we're resolving, so it's going to be cosine of 30. So what we've got is 0.25g cosine 30, but it acts in the opposite sense to what I've selected as positive here. So it's going to be minus, minus 0.25g cosine 
of 30 degrees. Okay, and that's it. Okay, they are the only forces acting on P. And because it is in equilibrium in this direction relative to the plane, okay, it's neither moving off the plane or moving into the plane, then that resultant force must be equal to zero. Okay, so we know T. We know G, G is 9.8, okay, so if I just rearrange this, I can get R. So we've got to just simply add 0.25G, okay, we'll take G as 9.8, let's put 9.8 in there, okay, 9.8 cosine of 30 degrees. And I've got to subtract T sine 20, so subtract T, T is, we'll take this unrounded version, it's going to be 1.3036 and so on. And that's multiplied by the sine of 20 degrees. Okay, so if you work that out on your calculator, you should find you get 1.6758 and so on. And if we round this to three significant figures, it's going to be 1.68 newtons to 3SF, three significant figures. Okay, so I hope you've been able to uh, follow my methods there. As I say, normally I wouldn't mark on the components, so we'll just take those components back off. I'd work off this uh, diagram here, seeing those components though. All right?